233 billion pounds. That's the amount of food that goes uneaten every year in the United States alone, 400 pounds per person. It's called food loss, but we can think of it as lost food because it never finds its way into a mouth. What's so bad about food loss? If food isn't eaten, then it can't do what it was primarily meant to do. Keep people and animals healthy and alive. That's bad enough, but other bad stuff happens when food can't find a mouth. Let's think about everything that has to happen before food is ready to be eaten. First, it has to be grown. A calf becomes a cow or a bull. A seed becomes a carrot. Then it has to be processed. Carrots are harvested, then trucked to a facility where they're washed, sorted, cut, peeled, and polished. Cattle are shipped to a facility where they're slaughtered and the meat is packed. Foods then have to be shipped to distribution companies where they are stored until sold to food manufacturers grocery stores, and restaurants. Finally, consumers buy the food. Most of these activities, like growing, harvesting, transporting, and packaging, are using Earth's limited resources, like land, water, and fossil fuels. So when food is lost, we're also losing natural resources that can't be replaced. And all the money that was spent on these activities is also lost. On top of that, food is the single largest category of material placed in landfills. When the food rots, it produces a gas called methane. Methane is one of the greenhouse gases contributing to global warming. Okay, you get it. Food loss is bad. But how can we reduce it? First, we need to understand why it happens. The first thing we think of is food that's intentionally thrown away by consumers. Maybe because... We bought more than we needed, or cooked more than would be eaten, or even misunderstood a safety-related label. But food loss happens at every step in the food supply chain. Sometimes too much of a particular food is produced. Bad weather and disease harms crops and livestock. Food is needlessly exposed to harmful bacteria and mold during processing, transport, and storage. Produce that doesn't look perfect gets discarded. Stores encourage consumers to buy more than they need. They overstock shelves and fail to accurately predict shelf life. So there are many people involved in food supply who can improve their methods to reduce food loss. Consumers are one of the big contributors to food loss. We can help minimize the problem by finding ways to use leftover food. Whether it's making soup or using soft fruits in certain cooked dishes. Buying oddly shaped fruits or composting in your home or garden. There are ways consumers like me and you can help food find its way into mouths and away from landfills. All you have to do is think about it.